Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you th we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray the spirit to think and do always those things that are right. That we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touching him, and said, Get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 34. We will sing in unison verses 1 through 8. It can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 627.
I'll be reading this morning a letter from, the, from Paul to the Ephesians. Verse 25 and 5, verse 2. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for evil. Thieves must give up stealing, rather let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear, and do not grieve the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. <coughs> as Christ, as God in Christ has forgiven you, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
love and where true love is, God himself is there. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts, our souls, our minds, that we may hear the gift that you have for us, that it may be planted in our heart and bear fruit in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I can probably count, well, maybe on my hands and toes, the number of times where whenever I was giving communion, a child would say something really poignant when receiving the bread, which is really why I want children to be so included when we gather at the table, because sometimes they get it, right? So I remember one time uh, at my previous church, this little boy took, took his hands and, and raised them up like this, and I put the bread in his hand, and he ate it, and he kind of tasted it. You could see the look on his face, and he goes, Mmm, that's some good Jesus. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, I mean, you know, you got it. You got it. But here's the thing about communion and taking the bread. It's interesting how we can find something that funny and and cute and wonderful that a child would say, but 2,000 years ago would have been considered heresy, would have been considered offensive, would have been considered terrible. How can I am the bread of life be offensive? Well, you have to understand the context of where Jesus is and who he's talking to in this moment. See, Jesus makes this statement, and remember, 
uh, we've been in John chapter 6 the last few weeks, and we've had the feeding of the 5,000, and then remember last week where those people who were the recipients of that wonderful and miraculous meal now are trying to find Jesus and get him to do more replicating and multiplying of the bread, which is what leads him to say, I am the bread of life. And that statement right there was bad enough. But Jesus goes even further in today's gospel lesson and almost digs the hole deeper for himself. So first of all, in saying I am, faithful Jews would have known that the statement I am, I am is the name of God. And so when Jesus says I am, he is equating himself with God. Now, for you and me, that, that's okay. Like, we, we get that Jesus is part of the Godhead. But back then, not ever understanding that or hearing that before and hearing Jesus say, I am anything, would have been a really horrible thing for anyone to hear. And then he, is, he says, I am the bread of life. Bread, which was so important, not just to everyday people, because everybody ate bread every day, but especially to the Jewish people, bread was more than just something that sustained you on a daily basis. Bread was something that sustained your faith. If you remember the Passover meal and the bread that was given to them. And then once they left Egypt and they were in the wilderness and they were starving and hungry, that manna that came down from heaven. So Jesus then says, I am the bread of life which comes down from heaven. He's also equating himself not just to God, but also to the miracles and the story and the ways that they understood God. So... You can see at first, like, he's already in some trouble here. And they question and they say, but wait a second. No, no, no. We, we know this guy. We know where he comes from. He came from Nazareth. He's Mary and Joseph's little boy. What does he mean by he came down from heaven? That doesn't make any sense. Like, not only is he equating himself with God and this miracle of God's provision, but he's also just telling straight up lies because we know where this guy came from. So there's another further deepening of the hole that Jesus is in. And then he goes one step further and says, whoever eats this bread, whoever eats me, my flesh is this bread. Now remember, Jews had lots of dietary laws. And to eat the flesh of another human being, even for you and me, to eat the flesh of another human being is gross and offensive. So Jesus to then mention this to them, which is against everything that they believed, their entire code, their entire way of life. You can see why they would be so upset in this moment. Eating your flesh? Really? That's terrible. It's easy sometimes for us when we are so steeped in something that we believe, it's really easy to get offended. All of us get offended from time to time. And just like those Jews who were listening to Jesus and, you know, all they wanted was just another good meal. Jesus takes it to a whole nother level and they are just completely rocked. See, they are focused on the past bread that God provided, both the manna in the wilderness and also this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. They are stuck on that wonderful and amazing thing, and rightly so, because all, both of those miracles were incredible. But they're missing the living bread that is standing right in front of them. See, there's a difference between, between tradition 
and nostalgia. Nostalgia comes from the Greek word nostos, which means to return home, and algos, which means pain. Pain of returning home. Based on our perception of our experience rather than the experience itself. That's what nostalgia is. Tradition, which comes from the Latin word across and dare to give, to give across, to hand over, to hand on word. That is based on God's perception of an experience. So tradition is living and breathing while nostalgia remains static in the past. Changing a nostalgic perception is offensive to us. While evolving and adapting tradition over time brings life. And Jesus is living into the tradition of God's ever generous providence of life-sustaining bread. He's not doing away with that memory. He's not saying that those memories are bad or that they shouldn't dwell on them or that they shouldn't uh, acknowledge that they were wonderful moments. But Jesus is carrying that tradition forward by saying that he is that life-sustaining bread. His listeners are stuck in the nostalgia of the feelings that the miracle brought, which brings pain, which then brings complaint. But Jesus is encouraging us and them to take that beautiful tradition and to pass it forward. To take that living bread and to take it out into the world. We are in a time when many of the things we would call tradition are in flux. And that's painful. It's hard. It's difficult to manage. None of us are experts at knowing how to manage the constant shifts and changes of both our daily life and our church life together. And that brings about a great deal of pain and sorrow and grief because it feels like at one point we're losing something that we've had. But I would encourage you to remember the deeper tradition. That tradition of God's providence. That God has walked with God's people for a long time and God will continue to do so. That is the true tradition. That is how we will make it through these weeks and days ahead. When we find ourselves complaining to God about the changes that we have to experience is there an invitation to consider whether or not we are steeped in mere nostalgia? Or are we carrying forward that ever-changing beauty of tradition? So today, we're going to have an exercise in terms of carrying that tradition forward. It's not going to be the way that we have done it before. But we're going to do something new today at communion. Today we're going to attempt to provide communion to you in both kinds, both the bread and the wine. Now, those of you who have been here for a while know that back in the day we used to drink from the cup or dip it in the cup, right? Well, we can't quite do that, right? So I think we've figured out a safe way to do it, even in the midst of rising COVID times. So when you come forward for communion today, be thinking about if you would like communion in either one kind or two kinds. And when you come up for communion, I want you to give me that signal, either one or two. That way I'll know what to, we'll know what to provide for you. And I will give you the bread in your open palm like that, just like always. 
if you get it in one kind. But if you want it in two kinds, what I'll do is I will intent for you in the cup and I will put it in your hands. Uh, I'll drop it in your hands uh, so that there's no contact. Now, you're, you may get some wine on your hands, but I'm just kind of saying that's just us being washed in the blood of Jesus. All right? So we're going to try that, and we're going to see how that works, and I think that that hopefully will be, one, a way for you to re-experience this holy meal again. Not dwelling on the way that we did it before, but experiencing it anew in the midst of the times that we're in. And taking that bread and that wine, even in just a few drops, and eating that flesh and drinking that blood in a new way. Inviting it to enter into us so that we may be transformed in a new way. So that we may carry this tradition, this holy tradition of eating the flesh of our Lord, of taking in the bread of life and truly living as we go forward. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. Page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven. Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Rob, Don, and Paul, our own bishops, for Jeff, our priest, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe, and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel. We pray to you, O Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have condemned themselves to our prayers, commended ourselves. Big difference. <laughs> yeah. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Katrina, Betty Ann, Rodney, Jan Ulrich, Mike, Lisa, Marsha, Laura, Dan, Shirley, Debbie, Ann, Sophie, Allison, Noel, Lily, Journey, Melissa, Walter, Lisa, Landon, Jessica, John, Joanne Markley, Judy Baumgartner, Phyllis, Cece, Mitch, Ralph, Francis, Meredith, Brenda, Marcia, Judy, Peggy, Judith, the ICU staff of Tanner, our seminarians, Joshua and Andrew and their families, and all who serve in the military. We pray to you, O Lord, Lord, have mercy. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our bishops, Rob Wright, Don Wimberly, and Paul Lambert, the clergy and people of St. Clair's, Blairsville, Georgia Mountains Convocation, for all congregations seeking new or renewed direction, and for the bishop and people of our companion and partner, Diocese of Cape Coast, Ghana, and our sister parish, St. Teresa of Avila, Cape Coast. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Margaret, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left. you in eternal life. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. God's peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace, buddy. <laughs> You're not the first one to do that. Peace, y'all. God's peace. God's peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, 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 peace. Please be seated. Well, welcome everyone to St. Margaret's. If you are joining us for the first time, if you've been here every week, or uh, if you haven't been here in a while, we are delighted to have you. Or if you're joining us from home, we are delighted to have you with us as well. Uh, and just want to remind you all that all are welcome at God's table. Again, don't forget to uh, remind me either one or two when you come up for the uh, for communion today. Uh, we want to welcome Diana Blosser, who's our guest organist today. Let's give her a round of applause. As many of you know, uh, our sweet doc is, uh, has got the COVID. So um, he is recovering and he's doing okay and all is well, but we, are, we continue to pray for him uh, and for his recovery as well. Uh, and we're grateful to have you, Diana. Thank you for filling in, especially on such sh short notice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so today I want to invite you uh, after the service to join us in the parish hall uh, as we celebrate uh, the love and the, 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 the marriages of two amazing couples in our congregation. First of all, uh, Blake and Deborah Adams, uh, who were... Uh, who renewed their vows last night in a, an amazing celebration uh, wedding uh, out in the middle of nowhere, Dallas, Georgia. And uh, it was really a wonderful time. Uh, so we'll be celebrating them, but we'll also be celebrating uh, the 50th wedding anniversary of Ron and Karen Adams. So, um, so please come and join us and get some cake. I think there's some cake. Is that, we is that wedding cake from last night? You want this cake. I'm telling you, you want the, even if you if you're not comfortable sticking around, grab a piece of cake and go. Like it's really good cake. Um, I had two pieces. Um, uh, it was a cheat day for me. Um, so uh, also coming up um, tomorrow, uh, loads of love is going to be out at the Roadway Inn again, delivering. Um, laundry detergent and dryer sheets and vouchers for people to do their laundry. Uh, and so uh, if anyone is interested in that and wants to help out, um, you can talk to Marcy Brewer, who's back there. Marcy, wave your hand. She's back there. Um, and you can uh, join us if you are available, even for an hour or 30 minutes if you want to join us. Um, we'd love to have you. Uh, ECW is happening this Tuesday? Oh, okay, right. It was on the calendar, but I wanted to make sure I, I meant to ask you before. So never mind that. Um, but this Thursday, Grief Support Group is going to be meeting at 630 in the parish hall. If you or someone you know is going through a rough time, a rough season, uh, if they've lost someone or, or something that uh, is, is deeply painful for them, um, invite them to join us for our Grief Support Group. Um, uh, that'll be 630 on Thursday in the parish hall. Um, also, coming up next Sunday, um, a couple things to, to note. Um, uh, after both services, uh, we are going to be having two information sessions on Sacred Ground. Sacred Ground is a new uh, uh, formation program that we are going to be starting and kicking off this fall. It's a film and readings based uh, circle dialogue group that focuses on issues of race and reconciliation and healing and uh, acknowledging our own participation in that system and how can we transform 
uh, both ourselves and also our world around us as we have those conversations and create a safe space for us to talk about this with people who aren't going to judge us or condemn us or shame us, but, um, but lovingly talk us through uh, all of these issues. So um, there will be an information session about that next week. Um, we are also considering a way to do that via Zoom or online as well. So if you can't make it next week, we'll also uh, be thinking about uh, ways to allow you to do that as those groups will decide if they want to meet in person or in Zoom uh, later this fall. Also, Sunday school registration, uh, really for all ages, but mostly for young kids all the way up through youth. Um, that registration will begin next Sunday as well. So um, if you have kids or if you have no, no a teenager or a youth uh, and they need to get plugged in somewhere, uh, please uh, uh, check your email, watch out for registration uh, forms and things that will be coming to you um, starting next Sunday. So keep an eye out on that. All right. Anything else I'm missing? No? All right. Uh, there's some birthdays and some anniversaries we want to recognize today. Randy Hooper, Pamela Saunders, Edward Fleck, Turner Garrett, Olivia Castleberry, Frank Scholas, Jack Bernhardt, Elizabeth Cochran, and Jack Stark. Are there any other birthdays that I'm missing in this upcoming week? Let us pray for these individuals. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And anniversaries, Jim and Pat Burton, Tom and Joe Fortner, and Bob and Missy Sullivan, in addition to our other couples that we are also going to be celebrating today. Are there any other anniversaries this upcoming week? No? All right, let us pray. Grant, O oh God, in your compassion that these couples, having taken each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they have made, may grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love, and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with you and will remain with you always. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
praise Him, all creatures here below. Oh, praise Him, alleluia. Praise Him above. Eucharistic Prayer C is on page 369 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxy, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection. As we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church, gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously... My friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with us and will remain with us forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.